just be prepared for anything because it's it's not looking good <laughs> Six hundred and thirty five miles. All right, let's go. Tuning in to another episode of Hanging with Zanin. My name's Zane. Uh, let's take off this helmet. Today, we are going to be doing a review of the Aventon Adventure. Now, I've had this bike for over 620 miles, and I got to say, I'm very happy with it. It makes the perfect it's the fan escape vehicle i'm gonna go over some of the uh changes that i made to my event in. okay so the first thing you may notice is i took off the front and the rear fenders just because i'm in a very dry climate here in uh, southern california and there's just no reason to have them on there the things that i added obviously i bought the front rack here and it's been great I do like how it stays stationary and it doesn't turn with the handlebars. It's really, really nice. And on top, it's holding my tent and some food. Next change is, I bought this bell here. I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head. I'm gonna go and edit in a little screenshot of what it is. And I wanted something that wasn't too uh, obtrusive. I didn't want a big bell sitting up here. I just wanted something that was simple, kind of blends in with the handlebars itself. So I got that. I added this rear view mirror here because I ride this to work every day. So I needed something to check out for traffic. Obviously you don't need this if you're on the trails all day long, but yeah, I wanted to add one. All right, next thing you'll notice over here is this top cage. Now down here, there is a spot right here for a water bottle, but it just doesn't give much room and I'd rather have this uh, Inigu. <laughs> I'll, I'll link to this as well, this little uh, um, triangle pack here. Now I didn't want to put a water bottle down here just because there's not much room and I wanted a top cage one. So this is a top cage. Links for everything will be in the description. And this is a Camelback water bottle, which I'm going to take a drink from now. In China. Just slides right in there. I actually love this thing. I'm super happy with that purchase. Now when I do a long distance one, I'll have a Rock Bros uh, extra cup holder right here. I think you saw it on my bike packing adventure. And I, I love that bag. It's just a, I don't use it all the time because it kind of makes noise rubbing up against the uh, handlebar stem right here. So I don't know if I have to get some, uh, some type of tape or something to put around this when I use that so it doesn't make that noise. All right, next thing you'll notice is a Cloud 9 seat. I didn't have this on my backpacking adventure and I sorely missed it. My butt hurts. 
That's definitely my biggest complaint for this whole trip is my butt hurts. I will definitely put that Cloud 9 on next time I go, like no matter what. Pun intended. So the Cloud 9 is amazing. My only complaint about it is it makes a lot of noise, which is unfortunate. Whenever you pedal, you can kind of hear like a noise. That's kind of annoying. So I, I put new pedals on. I did not like the original pedals. These ones give a little more grip onto my shoe. And I also have these uh, these toe clamps or whatever, whatever you want to call this. Um, obviously a link in the description. But this was a game changer. This is one of the best upgrades I did. I think everybody should do something like this. It's because not only does it keep your foot on the pedal and in place all the time, every time you're pedaling, when you're lifting your foot, it's also, you know, adding torque. So not only do you add torque when you push down on the pedals, also when you lift up. It's just more efficient riding. That's why uh, touring bicyclists use the clip-in system which I did not want to do on this because I didn't want to wear clip boots. All right, and then uh, I got these panniers here. The Ross panniers. And this is my little vlog setup thing, little box there, wouldn't fit in the panniers. But yeah, I got a little pack there. These things are full to the brim. Up top. I kind of went over on my bikepacking adventure all the stuff I had inside, so I don't think I'm going to go over that in this video. But these panniers are great. Uh, this top part is detachable. Right here. Right here. You could detach them. And remove this top part and leave this on here. But uh, I leave it all together. And then I guess the last upgrade I have on the exterior of my bike would be this. I forget what this is. I guess it's... Uh, GV, not quite sure what it stands for, but uh, under the seat, little bag, and that's got like my, uh, oh here, let's open it up. I got my tool here, bike tool with the chain replacer, and then all the different little setups here. It's uh, Crank Brothers. I looked at reviews to see what was the best uh, bike tool, and this came up nine times out of 10, so I went and got the best. Put it back inside its container. Now I do like how it has its own little container. It's like a really strong, I think fiberglass container. Oh, what else do I got here? All right. And here I also got some uh, dry lube because I'm in a very dry climate. And then I believe the rest of what I got in here is, since I can't really get to it because my pannier is in the way, I'm not gonna dig in there right now. Let's put this back in here. I also have basically uh, tire patches. I have a uh, tire pump, one of those uh, air compressor pumps. I'll display something over the screen here. And yeah, this extra tire pump is pretty cool. I mean, it's got the air compressor, so you don't need to pump anything. I also have a regular bike pump in, inside there. But yeah, those are the main upgrades. All right, so my review for the actual bike itself. Now, as I said, I've had it for over 620 miles. I absolutely love it. It's one of the best buys I've ever made in my life. Uh, I could imagine, you know, shit hits the fan. Uh, just hop on this and go. I could survive for a quite long extended amount of time on this thing. Uh, I'm, I'm out of shape for all that right now, but uh, you know, in a shit hits the fan situation, you're gonna get in better shape and you're gonna do it. Uh, and obviously training still going along to get, get in better shape for it. Um, now I love, I love this thing. I've, I, like I said, I ride it to work every single day. I work about seven to eight miles away from my house. So every day I'm doing, you know, 15, 16 miles and it's great. Like I could get to work and back two times, no problem on one charge, even have some charge to spare. Whether, oh, we got a bug here. We got a stink bug. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Yeah, so I could get to work and back two times, no problem. Uh, a lot of the time on the way to work, I'll keep it on power level one or two. I'll use like, you know, maybe 10% of my battery. Then on the way home when I'm tired, so I, I wait tables at a fine dining restaurant. On the way home when I'm tired, sometimes I'll kick it up to five and that's what drains my battery. 
because I just want to just get home, take a shower, and you know get ready for bed. But uh, yeah, so I 610 miles. My car probably gets about 14 miles to the gallon. So I'll just calculate how much money I've saved on gas. It's almost paid for itself, this bike. I think everybody should have one of these things. Now I watched, I've seen almost every Aventon video there is on YouTube and there's not that much, which is why I started making some videos myself. And uh, everybody is talking about how they love this bike and for good reason, it is one of the best bikes that you could get right now. There's a few new ones coming out that are a little more power. That's a, that's a loud plane. Can I see it? <laughs> There's a couple new bikes coming out. Um, I forget the name of it. It doesn't have a very good name. Aventon definitely has the marketing down better than these uh, other companies. But uh, yeah, all the parts on the Aventon have been great. The, the one issue that I did have, I noticed that was consistent for a while during the first 300 miles or so was this right here. It kept loosening on me, so then this part would actually jiggle, and I'd have to re-tighten it. And that happened quite a bit over the first 300 miles. So what I did is I actually got some, uh, I'm not sure what this stuff is called. I'll, I'll link it here, but it's basically you put it on the, the nut, on the uh, on the threads of a, a nut, and then it'll hold it in place so it doesn't loose up as much, and that, that fixed the problem. So maybe maybe that's just what I needed to do from the start. You know, I'm a big dude, so I guess during really steep climbs, like there's a mountain right back here. When I get to about the top of that one, it's it can't quite lift me over that, so I have to actually really pedal myself, which is <laughs> not a big deal. I think you should have to pedal yourself. That's the whole point. Uh, my other biggest beef with the Aventon is, I guess, the range? Even though it's better than the other bike of its class, I mean, it, I've taken this thing 65 miles on one charge, no problem. Granted, on flats, I wasn't using battery, and uh, I kept it on the one or two setting, and 65 miles, no problem. Uh, it's really sturdy. My new record is now 46 miles per hour going downhill. Of course, I'm crouched like a maniac. And, uh, yeah, I suggest everybody gets a bike like this. Uh, there's some other good ones out there, but in terms of just being sturdy and strong, this bike has got it going on. It's a sturdy, strong bike. It's great for trails. I mean, you could put a lot of weight on it. I probably have close to 40, 50 pounds on this thing. And its max payload is 400 pounds. So, you know, I still got 50, 60 pounds to spare. I'm a 230 pound man-ish around there. 6'2", so I have the large frame. It works out very, very well for me. I definitely could easily put my rifle on the back or strap it on my back, have my pistol, have ammo. Plenty of weight to spare. I could even haul some water at the same time on top of that. All right, so that's my uh, initial review of the event and adventure. I'll put some more stats along the screen here. Maybe I'll record over and talk about some of these other things too about the wattage. I mean, you, there's so many reviews of this bike now. Go watch somebody else's, but I'm just giving you my basic review of everything and all the things that I bought for it. Like I said, I'll link everything down in the description below, so please click those links if you want to purchase it yourself. And now I'm going to be interrupted by somebody walking over here. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm wearing this get up here. Got my plates. Uh, got my pepper spray here, got my radio here, Channel mode. got my first aid here, got my phone usually right here along with a little notepad, and usually I'd have uh, extra ammo, I'd have ammo here, I'd have my rifle, I'd have my sidearm, and uh, basically I think everybody should be very, very prepared right now in life. There's so much going on, not only with, with Russia and you know, Ukraine and China now, looking at Taiwan, and unfortunately the horrible shooting over in Texas has 
obviously sent the left talking about, oh, we need to ban guns because, you know, criminals obey gun laws. So they want to disarm all the law-abiding citizens, and that's just not right. So in these times, I think it's very important that we prepare ourselves and we get ready for what possibly could be a boogaloo, who knows? Uh, it's, it's just best that everybody starts training, preparing for worst case scenarios because, you know, things aren't looking too bright. You know, we got the, the supply chain problems, we got inflation, we got uh, you know, just this extreme divide of political opinion. You know, I remember the day where we all agreed on just being Americans, and that's a good thing. Where we love our neighbors. You know, even though we have dis differences, we could disagree with each other and still protect and love one, one, one another. So, you know, it's very important that we all start preparing for the worst case scenario. Now, let's pray that that doesn't happen. But it's better to be prepared and ready for anything and not have to use it than to be not prepared and just be a victim to the situation. I think it's time everybody starts getting to know your neighbors more, uh, form groups together, make militias, maybe unofficial militias, and start to get to know your neighbor. Uh, form little action groups where, you know, if X happens, Y will happen, and everybody is on the same line so that you're ready for anything. Also, get yourself uh, some protection whether it be a handgun. Can't believe Canada is trying to ban handguns. That is absurd, out of control. Anyways, so everybody should have a handgun, a rifle. Um, go to your local firing range and practice, practice shooting. Uh, learn survival skills, whether that be finding water, reading topographical maps, using a compass. Um, food prep, being able to plant food. Uh, diversifying your finances. You know, start getting some gold and si this isn't financial advice. Start getting some gold, silver. Uh, cryptocurrencies are good. You know, even in a situation where the power goes out, cryptocurrency will still be around. Don't you worry about that. Uh, you know, start forming uh, bartering friendships. Uh, talk to some people. Find out who in your neighborhood is growing tomatoes in their backyard. Who has chickens? Who has potatoes? And start putting together a network of people so that you're ready for anything. So yeah, what? It, I'm wearing this because I, I like to train in this. I want to wear the extra weight. I got my steel plates in here and I go on hikes in this gear. So I'm hiking, you know, five, six, maybe even sometimes 10 miles in this gear because I need to get ready. I need to be prepared. If I have to leave my home, I can survive out in the wild for weeks at a time if I have to. And uh, maybe in another video, I'll go over all my gear. Maybe I could show you my rifles. I don't know how YouTube feels about that. Yeah, I'll go over my bug out actual backpack and bag situation. Obviously, you know, since I got my electric bike, that is my bug out situation. I wouldn't be using my car. Maybe I would for the first few hundred miles just to get to a trailhead somewhere far away. But outside of that, I'm, I'm not touching my vehicle. I, I've already, I already have routes from my house hundreds of miles away in multiple directions. So I suggest you do the same too, start preparing. Love your neighbor, get to know them, uh, form groups, and uh, just be prepared for anything because it's, it's not looking good. Like I said, supply line, food shortages, all these buildings burning down, inflation, political divide, not to mention the worst uh, financial divide we've ever seen. The rich are getting richer. You know, it's really, it's looking like the the people in charge really want this to escalate as far as it can go. So just be prepared for anything and stay safe out there. Thank you for hanging with Zayn. Peace.